<laughs> Am I even like centered? Hi. Happy New Year! It's New Year's Eve. I'm dressed up. I'm ready to go to Carter's house. He's throwing a party. Madison is actually coming to get me. I have extra time. So I thought I would share with you something a little personal. Actually, it's it's very personal. Every single year on New Year's Eve, I write a letter to the universe. I got this idea from Christina Perry. I want to say 2010, 2011 on her Tumblr, she shared the letter that she wrote. And each year she writes a letter to the universe. She had some amazing goals, unbelievable things that had happened it brought so much hope that I started to write letters to the universe as well in fact every single year on December 31st before I go out and celebrate the new year I reflect on the current one and I write kind of it's like a thank you note to the universe and I always end with pages and pages of my favorite photographs after you know giving thanks and a little bit of hope for the next year but I really don't write my resolutions in there it's more of giving back to what gave you so much and I was curious as to what I wrote last year at this time, about 2014. It's so distant. I don't feel like that person anymore. So I thought I would share with you what I wrote in that letter. And if you like it, then I'll share with you what I wrote tonight. Although that's a lot more personal because it's current. In fact, it's a lot of processing that is still happening because of everything. But this is my outlet, and I love being real and honest with you guys, and I feel like this is what you like to see. So I want to share it with you because... I haven't shared it with anyone, and it means something. Alright, I looked it up, and I titled it December 31st, 2014. <sighs> Keep in mind, I wrote this a year ago, but it's about the year before. So it's about my senior year, first year of college, 18 to 19 years old. Dear Universe, wow, what a year it has been. What a wonderful, wild, wicked year you have blessed me with, and I am so, so thankful. The year that my entire life has been labeled as Class of 2014 had finally arrived, and it was by far the most insane, best year of my life. Everyone was right. It did fly by. I am both struck with shock and frisson, just beginning to think about the last year of my life and all you have granted me with. <laughs> I have just released all the negative energy and toxins from this year. Now that I have let go and am ready to wake up tomorrow to the dawn of a new year, it is time to reflect. 2014, the year my generation has been waiting for. Well, it has come and gone, and on this eve, I remember where I was a year ago, who I chose to surround myself with and what I decided to put my energy into. I entered the year of fifth wheel in a tiny hotel room full of pizza grease and champagne, and I remember scribbling on the hotel's notepad about how this year will be different. Things are going to change. I am going to change. Did I? Well, I believe so. Because if I hadn't, I would still be stuck drinking myself to the ground only as an excuse to self-harm and rise from the ashes the next morning better. I'd still surround myself by people holding me back and trying to fix things and people who can't be changed. I would still be in L blank V E with this guy, still waiting for him to choose me over everyone else, waiting there like I'm only worth it for the moment he looked or smiled or texted me in between being with somebody else. I was waiting for something that was never going to be something. The night of my senior prom is when reality hit me and the Molly hit his system. I realized that, so I promised myself to let go because I am worth so much more. It took a few months, a few months of self-care and self-hatred until I finally felt worth it again. It was the night my body was entangled with his and his sheets, the summer heat and stars of that night, crickets and clear skies as little reminders of how he made me so happy, how I wanted to make him happy, how I saw an entire life with him after just a few hours together. Suddenly, there was a future for me. Because after growing up not being able to picture my life after graduation, perceiving I must die somehow, to suddenly wanting to live forever, that was the biggest non-moment moment this past year for me. It's just such a shame it took a boy to get me there, that I only see it, still, with him. Beyond romance and young love, the people in my life this year were by far the best people I've had in my entire life. I am forever grateful and happy and thankful for them, and I sincerely hope I don't lose them anytime soon. Although I realize that those I do lose have been lost for a good reason. I remember seeing a reader this last June. She had me think of a person in my life who I was once close to but feel that I have lost. I thought of both X and Y, two best friends who suddenly deserted me. I feel I have lost a lot of close friends due to my mental states. The psychic told me that this person was full of negativity, who would only hold me back from my full potential, and was in fact jealous. So I said goodbye to X and Y this year, and do I miss them? From time to time, of course, but I feel much happier here than I did with them by my side. 
Perhaps that is because now by my side, I have found the most wonderful and amazing individuals who both help me grow and keep me grounded at the same time. I am still in shock, despite the numerous other entries written about this, as to what I did to deserve such amazing friends and people. This year, the tightest bond has formed between five girls, all very different in taste, passions, backgrounds, humor, and overall everything. But I think that's what makes us so close, because there is always something to discuss and debate and laugh over. I feel I have discovered more about myself by being with them and allowing them into my life. Not only that, but within this group, the infamous femme fatales have formed and conquered and destroyed. Long live the femmes! So many unforgettable memories occurred while being a femme. That was our assassins team senior year of high school. So many nights, so many cars and bullets and squeals of joy with each kill. The stories still come up just the other night at dinner even. We were talking about the night Madison and I burst through Carter's dog gate, breaking it from his basement and shot a friend <laughs> with a nerf gun. This is a game. The scream Carter let out was to die for. Or the night we drove to fireworks in his car and grabbed his iPhone to DJ only to open the iTunes app and see the paused song If We Were a Movie by Hannah Montana. <laughs> this year was a good one. When we hugged, I felt her hug me tighter before letting go. I still feel it. Thank you for helping me find the silver lining in this. The first goodbye to the first person ever to move away in my life. I don't think we would ever have begun to Skype had she not moved across the country. Now I see how important I am to her. Because of the efforts made and fantasies of when we'll meet up in Boston, how she'll sit front row at my wedding, and how one day she'll be the dedication page in a book of mine. She's helped me stay hopeful, grounded, and full of even bigger dreams. She believes in me, which makes me want to believe in myself. For her. I think I believe in myself more this year, knowing all things I am capable of, and whenever I feel myself struggling, after discussing it with her, I always discover a new perspective, new thought, new point of view, new way of dealing with it. It is said that from the ages 18 to 22, you meet a lot of temporary people in your life. But I believe this is just a fancy way of saying in college, you will meet people that are not meant to stay part of your life, which is true. But the people I have met so far in 2014 all serve a purpose. Here is a list of the important people who I feel have played a role and impacted my last year. Listing all these cool people in my life that I love dearly. These are those I love the most, those I have listened to, learned from, and said goodbye to. Have influenced me this present moment immensely and I am curious whom I will meet this next year. Who will be my first thought in 2015? And who will be my last? Huh. At this moment, I know exactly who my last thought's going to be. Gosh, I still can't believe what makes up the last year of my life. I truly believe that when you put good out there into the world, the world brings it back to you. I tried to put a lot of good out there this year, and I'm feeling a little bit of it in return. But this goal is something to really invest in this year, now that I, myself, am feeling good. If you want something to change, it needs to start with yourself. And that's exactly what I did. A year ago, I read Christina Perry's Note to the Universe, something she does every New Year's Eve. She wrote about how her resolution isn't a thing or a goal this year. Rather, it's hope to strive for sanity. I loved it. The way it rolled off my tongue, the way it made me feel, the way it made me want to strive for it too, and know that whenever it got hard, I wouldn't be alone because she'd be out there somewhere doing the same thing. And now, 365 days later, am I completely sane? Of course not. But I'm nowhere near where I was a year ago, and I still can't believe where I am now. Striving for sanity was the best resolution I have ever committed to. It's made me make some major changes and take major risks most being seeking help when I knew I needed to. That's why this year I will continue to strive for sanity. It has only made things better. This year I have lived, and I'm not just saying that to sound cliche and obnoxious. This year I have lived a life beyond what I thought ever possible. I have laughed a lot and cried a few million times. I aced a few tests and failed a few others. I felt confident in my skin and beautiful, but also confused as if a stranger to myself. I have hugged amazing people and inspirations, and said goodbye to those who would only keep me back from recovering. I have read stories that changed the way I saw things, stories that have encouraged me to change other things and be who I want to be. I graduated high school! I still need to pinch myself and look at pictures to remember that it's real and I actually did it! Only by a few hours, but hey, I fucking graduated. I traveled to New York City! The dream that kept me going since I can remember finally came true in the best way possible, and not once but twice in the same month. I danced, really danced my heart out at prom. 
surrounded by the best people in the world and I felt loved and in love and at home. I met Christina Perry, the woman who has helped save me, who has given me hope and courage and the outlet of music. I met her and we hugged and I told her how badly I was shaking so she hugged me tighter and smiled a ton. I'm still in shock that I met her, then stood first row at her concert. When the room went dark and we all stood there singing our canons to her song, I Believe, there was such an incredible ambiance to the room of positive energy and hope, I smiled and tried to soak it all in. I had a graduation party and celebrated my 19th year alive. I moved out of my home and onto my own, hundreds of miles away in Ohio. Might not be a highlight, but it still happened and affected. Ran out of memory space, continue. But the new resolutions, yes there are two! are to film part of my life every day for a video that I'm going to make, as well as write a poem a day. It doesn't have to be perfect or even good, I just have to write it. My favorite English teacher once told me about a great poet who would do that every morning, and hey, if I want to be a writer, I have to dedicate myself. So I am. I'm dedicating myself to writing, to creating, to reflecting and being present in this moment and in this life. I am dedicating myself to live. And so tonight, when I'm surrounded by people I grew up side by side with in Carter's basement and we count down and scream and cheer for a new year, I know I will be leaving 2014 with good thoughts and beginning the next one with good ones as well. Surrounded by those that will make me happy and help me and support me in ways I never thought possible. I'm going to be happy because it's the only way I'm going to get somewhere. So universe, here's to the last 12 months, the good and the bad. Because even though there was quite a lot of bad, I needed those times to help me see the good. Which there was also quite a lot of. Here's to the amazing memories and people. Here's to the best last night to a great year. And here's hope for what's to come. Your little piece of the universe, Michaela. I hope that didn't bore you too much. I hope you enjoyed. That's really personal. But if you've been keeping up with this channel for a while, you do know that I like to sprinkle in some very raw videos once in a while, like this one. If you did enjoy, let me know, because I would like to share with you the letter that I wrote tonight about 2015. I'm not sure, I don't know. It's real, it's my life at this moment, and that's scary. I can talk about that. That was two years ago almost. That was 2014. I'm so different. Well, I have to go. I'm getting ready to celebrate 2016. I guess I'll see you guys in the new year. Sorry this was so long. I hope it wasn't boring. Happy New Year! Bye!